Hey guys, uh, today I figured I'd upload a video to kind of quickly show you how to set up your Megascans materials through Quixel Mixer and how to set it up in Unreal Engine 4 so that you can actually use it for vertex painting. Um, I'm not going to get in too much of the details how to set up the actual texture or material itself in the engine. I am going to post two videos that are going to better explain it than I can and once you set these up you won't have to do it again. You'll, all you'll have to do is replace the textures so you can do this on any material within your environment and you won't have to worry about it again. So I'm just going to show you really quickly um, the material, the master material that I had set up. It looks a little bit intimidating but it's really not. Uh, so when you watch the first video the guy will explain how to set this up and he even has an extra part where you can do UV tiling and stuff like that. But since this is pretty much a road, I don't need to really do that. But this basically blends two materials together using a height blend. Uh, setup takes a height map and then, you know, puts it into this little nifty spaghettified kind of uh, situation here. And even has the uh, contrast of the actual blending. So if for any reason when you're painting this in Unreal Engine 4 on your assets and you're not happy with the way it's feathering in or you know how soft it is or how sharp it is, you can mess around uh, with the material instance um, because these will basically expose parameters for you to, to mess around with. So that's the uh, master material and I'll show you the material instance. So over here, as I said, you can mess around with the parameters here. You can add these or take them away if you'd like. Uh, they're separated into two groups, as you saw in the uh, actual material. And basically, once you have this set up, you can switch out any of these textures with what you want to put in here. So you just make multiple uh, instances, and you can endlessly create materials that are going to be able to blend together. Now, this is a basic uh, blend between two materials, only using the red uh, channel of the RGB. But you'll be able to uh, see in the second video that I'll post how to, uh, or at least the link that I'll post in the description, how to um, use multiple materials in, in one to be able to get way more advanced uh, details. So basically what you want to do, um, first off, to get these textures out of Quixel Mixer, uh, downloading any of their Megascans materials and things like that, is you want to make sure first off over an export, regardless what you have set up here, um, you want to make sure that you have this set to a folder that you're going to remember. Um, I would advise putting it somewhere like on your desktop really quickly and name the folder based on what your material is going to be just as a whole, not the, you know, like road wet or, or dry for the first folder. The folders inside of that I would name, you know, like road wet, road dry, road damage, uh, road undamaged, depending on what you're aiming for. And then export these texture maps that are going to be the ones that are selected here. This is the metal, uh, metalness workflow. And this is what works with Unreal Engine 4. So these will be the ones that will export into that folder. And those will be the textures that you bring into Unreal Engine 4 to set up in the material. And the way to do that is to go over here. Instead of doing export to library like you normally would for Quixel Bridge and going into Unreal Engine 4 from there, you will basically export these texture maps right into the folders that you specify um, and it'll even do you know a subfolder if you want it to so you could already have that set up or you could just you know make the folders yourself unclick this and it will directly drop these textures in there so let's say that you know you just wanna do one version of this road here okay you export that okay you have that in one folder now you wanna do another one and all you gotta do once you create an entire material um, you can delete the layer. I would save multiple times just to be careful and not overwrite the same file, but you could easily add this on here, you know, save it. But any of the ones that you're not using, um, I would just delete just in case because I don't know if it's still going to save it within your material. So just delete those layers. So if you didn't want the tileable leaves on there, delete the layers, save it as another project, um, and then export them and so on. But what I usually do, just to give you an idea of how I do this, I will start with just the original road, and then I made, you know, um, well, I made another version of it. So I did the original road, then I did one with, you know, it's wet with no leaves, road with leaves and no water, and then I did one with leaves and water. So it's four different versions, 
I put them all in folders and this way I can set them up later. So just keep that in mind you know, so you don't overwrite your own projects there. And that's pretty much it. Um, then you can get a good idea of how you're going to do this. Now what I would probably also uh, suggest is that once you start messing with the liquids, keep in mind um, when it blends the materials and you want to put water on one versus another or blend them in uh, to different assets, it's only going to show up like this. It's not going to go crazy over everything if you keep painting. It's only going to blend from this material to this material. So if you want more water, you have to set it up that way. So again, you'd have to go like this. You know, If you really want it full of water, that's what you're going to have to do. If you want it less, you're going to have to do this You know, and so forth. But I would keep in mind that if you do this, um, if you want to make multiple versions of the road underneath it, try to keep the water the exact same across the board. Otherwise, what's going to end up happening is that even though this is seamless, you're probably going to get like a part of a puddle here. And then if you go crazy like this, you're going to have another material instance and not realize you did this or forgot you did it. And then when it goes across that edge, it's going to have a bigger puddle that just doesn't line up. You know what I mean? Because this is supposed to be procedural and you want to make sure every layer is the same way. So just keep that in mind as well. So once that's done, you can come into here. Obviously, you set up the material, make the uh, material instance, just have it saved, things like that. And then uh, you pretty much go to work. So since I'm only using red, I only have that selected here. Over here, this basically acts like a mask, like in Photoshop. So you can switch between. But what you also can do is you can hold shift. So you might want to test it out first to see which one's which. Um, but also, when you bring in this material, it's going to have the water on it already. So you want to make sure that you erase all the water off of the uh, assets and then just kind of paint it in. So I'm guessing right now that is, um, yeah, that's not the water one. So if I were to switch it around, right, now this is what's going to happen. And you can change the strength too, so let's say, right, you can change the fall off. Oh, hmm, that's weird, what's going on here? Oh, okay, I see what's up. That's what you want to do. So it'll be a little bit more stronger, you know. And again, you want to change the fall off, you can. And that's all this is really doing is that it's just filling in based on the second texture and how that's actually going to look on it. And I make sure that the water um, is the same across the board no matter what variation of road I have underneath. That way when I do paint on the puddles and stuff it doesn't look ridiculous when it gets to the seams and I'll show you that in a second here. So that's pretty much that, right? So this is the part that makes this really cool. So So again, even though you're doing materials in Quixel uh, Mixer, you're able to use the realistic uh, textures to then do even more realistic stuff in the game engine. So if people have been wondering, how the heck do you do this? Well, the videos that I'll post in the description will better explain that for you. Um, I basically just followed them myself. And once you have those set up, you don't have to do it again, unless you want to edit obviously uh, different parameters or add things and maybe kind of mess around but I'd only advise you to do it if you know what you're doing and yeah so let me select off of this real quick and as you can see it's seamless there's no just cannot see any seams it's awesome so I uh, hope you learned something here I uh, hope this helped you out Pretty simple to put together, and uh, this is basically what everybody does in the triple game, uh, triple A game industry, when they want to create a lot of details on multiple assets 
without having, you know, any signs of tileable or, you know, seamless yet tileable uh, details that are obvious to the player. It just looks way more fluent, more organic, realistic. And yeah, so anyway, I hope you uh, learned something from this. Thanks for watching my videos. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, show your friends, tell everybody about it. And I uh, will catch you guys later.